Okay, we're going to continue our study of verbals by talking about infinitives. And remember again, verbals are those verbs that are going to take on other jobs in the sentence. So the basic definition of a verbal is it's structured as to plus a verb. Okay, so for example, to run, to sing, to dance. Right. Now the job of, a ver of an infinitive, what does it do in the sentence? It can act like an adjective, an adverb, or a noun. And the noun is a tough one because if it can do a noun job, that means it can be the subject, the object of a preposition, a predicate nominative, a direct object, or an indirect object. It can do all of those jobs that a noun could do in a sentence. So usually finding infinitives is no problem because they jump right out at you. To air, to travel, to ask, to visit. And these all happen to be simple infinitives with no modifiers. We'll get to those in a minute. Then you need to go back and start marking things in your sentence. So the first thing we always look for is a verb. To air is human. Is is a linking verb. It's always a linking verb. To find our subject, we say who or what is. Oh, to air is. So here, it's a noun subject. And I'm done. Human happens to be a predicate nominative, if you care. His dream is to travel. Again, linking verb. Now, if you want to think about these as a big multiple choice problem, where you would have adjective, adverb, subject, do, io, pn, op, I certainly think there's some value to physically crossing things off. His dream or is, who or what is, his dream. There's the subject. At that point, I can start making some choices. So I have a linking verb and I have a subject. Can't be the subject, linking verb, can't be a do, can't be an io. There's no preposition anywhere in sight. So I'm now down to three choices. If I have a linking verb, I have to have a predicate nominative or a predicate adjective to complete that sentence. His dream is to travel. To travel renames dream. That makes this a predicate nominative. So by eliminating some choices, it helps me narrow my thinking and I don't get overwhelmed by all of the choices. So she is the one to ask. Again, we have a linking verb. Who or what is, she is, let's look for that complement, she is what, the one, predicate nominative. So again, if I'm thinking about eliminating all my choices, well, what do I have? I have a subject, I have a PN, I have a linking verb, so these are off. There's no preposition anywhere, I'm down to two choices. So then it becomes my key questions. Adjectives answer which kind or which one. Tell me more about nouns and pronouns. Adverbs tell me where, how, when, to what extent, modifying verbs, adverbs, and other adjectives. So when I look at to ask, that seems to be telling me which one. One is marked a predicate nominative, which means it's a noun, which means this one is an adjective telling me which one, the one to ask, not the one to avoid, not the one to run from, it's the one to ask. Grandmother is coming to visit. So here I have is coming, action verb, who or what is, who or what is coming, grandmother is. Now in this case, if I was eliminating, I've eliminated a subject and a predicate nominative, there's no prepositions, I've eliminated that. Do I have a direct object. Nothing receives the action of coming. It isn't that kind of a verb. It's intransitive. So to visit seems to be telling me where or why she is coming. If something answers where or why and points at a verb, it makes it an adverb. Now if we go ahead and look at phrases, the only thing that changes with phrases is that we have the infinitive plus its modifiers. 
modifiers. So remember, the phrase itself takes the different jobs. But inside the phrase, you can have adjectives, adverbs, prep phrases, modifying that to verb. Okay, so you can have other words in there. So let's look at this. To hit a curveball solidly is very difficult. Well, obviously, to hit is easy to find, to study is easy to find, to trace, to accept. But we need to go back and look at if there are other modifiers, where does the phrase start and stop, or is it just the infinitive? So again, always look for the verb. To hit a curveball solidly is very difficult. Linking verb is. In the comprehension spirit of the sentence, who or what is. The sentence is about hitting. So this is your subject. Now, what do we do with everything here, a curveball and solidly? Well, a curveball tells me what I'm hitting, solidly tells me how I'm hitting, so all of this is your infinitive phrase, and together it acts like the subject. Again, the verb cannot be included in a verbal phrase, the actual verb of the sentence. So that's your fence. You have to stop there. Now what happens just for curiosity, difficult after a linking verb is a predicate adjective. Let's look at the next one. She wants to study marine biology. Wants is my action verb. Who or what wants? She does. Action verb, I check for a direct object. She wants what? What receives the action of being wanted? To study. What is she going to study? Marine biology. So all of that is your direct object. Next example, his efforts to trace his ancestry led to a greater appreciation of his heritage. Verb, led. Who or what led? Efforts led. Now I have a fence around all of this, so I have to make a decision. His efforts led, prep phrase, prep phrase. So I'm all good. To trace. Now what about his ancestry? Does it tell me about tracing? Does it tell me about efforts? Does it tell me about lead? Well, his ancestry is what he's tracing. So that works together as a phrase. Ancestry is modifying what he's tracing. Now what does this do as a group? It tells me more about which efforts, what kind of efforts. Efforts is a noun that makes this whole thing an adjective. I found his explanation difficult to accept. So found, action verb, who or what found, subject. What did you find? You found his explanation. Okay, that's kind of weird. Now, to accept, I've got to decide what do I do with difficult. Is difficult tell me more about accepting or is it telling me more about the explanation? And in this case, it happens to be telling me more about how, how it was difficult to accept, to accept it was difficult. That's your phrase. What is it doing? Oops, I missed. To accept tells me more about how it is difficult. Difficult is telling me about explanation. Got ahead of myself there. Difficult is describing the explanation. To accept is how or why it's difficult. Difficult is an adjective. So that makes this an adverb because it's modifying an adjective. Now the hints are very important at this point. First one, don't confuse a prep phrase with an infinitive because prep phrases are always two plus a noun. An infinitive is two plus a verb. So for example, to the house, here you have a prep and a noun. Don't confuse that with to house because for example, house can mean to store and in this case, it would be an infinitive because this is a verb. Right? So you really got to look at what follows the word to. Followed by a noun, it's a prep. Followed by a verb, it's an infinitive. We will worry more about this one when we talk about clauses, 
but just watch out to make sure there's not a subject, a noun in there, because that changes everything. Occasionally, the two is omitted, so it can be left out for stylistic purposes. So be sure that if you find a couple words that could be verbs, that you look at them to see if it's a clause in there or if you could put that two back in and there's a hidden infinitive. And that is the infinitive lesson.